Alrighty, let's go. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in the last week, particularly my friend Paul Lamio, loving husband, father, grandfather, great-grandfather, uncle, and army veteran of the Korean War, Sister M. Gabriel Kane, beloved sister, aunt, teacher, and retired administrator of Marywood University, John Mario Borelli, devoted father, grandfather, great-grandfather, faithful volunteer at the annual Solemn Novena at St. Anne's Basilica, proud World War II Navy veteran, and very dear family friend, and their families and many friends who suffer their loss. Also, please remember in your prayers my dear friend Ira Fenton, who was placed in hospice today. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Mr. Joyce? Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Third Order 3A, minutes of the Composite Pension Board meeting held December 12, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, Fireman's Pension Commission meeting held December 12, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, controller's report for the month ending December 31st, 2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, agenda for the City Planning Commission meeting to be held January 23rd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight, Mrs. Craig? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you. Uh, do any council members have announcements at this time? Blankets and ground coffee are needed at the Bethel AME Homeless Shelter located at 716 North Washington Avenue in Scranton across the street from Cooper's Seafood Restaurant. If you have spare blankets or extra coffee, ground coffee that is, please drop them off at the shelter. I thank our friend Barb O'Malley for bringing this vital need to our attention. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens participation. Our first speaker is Ron Elman. <laughs> Hello, Council. Hello. Good evening. For the, the last couple of weeks, I've sat out here quietly and patiently and listened to Mr. Burke cry and whine and complain about an apparent bad house deal he purchased on the Scranton Dunmore area up there by the lake. <clears throat> it seems like when you buy a house, you look around, and if you couldn't see the traffic and the trucks and everything else that goes down that road, you're either blind or stupid. But <clears throat> I, I just don't want to see the city of Scranton dragged into his battle with the Naples. We have no business whatsoever taking any interest in this. And, and I don't see why the, the council was so interested in, in the dirt that's being brought in there. If there was anything illegal, 
the newspaper would have gotten a hold of it months ago. I can see the road is bad, but I think if you looked at Mr. Doherty's desk, you'd find IOUs going back 20 and 30 years that would more and pave that road. It, it's that the taxpayers have just been weaned from these lawsuits, and Mr. Kelly said to drop it. I think it's time to, to go on and worry about 30 or 40,000 taxpayers in this city and not worry about get involved in Mr. Burke's battle with the DeNaples. We, we desperately need people like the DeNaples Enterprises and, and the Boluses and the Weinbergs and, and, and the, the Bernies in this city. The Progressive Center, all the, the, the Sister Adrian, they don't do nothing but help. They probably do more in one minute of their day than Mr. Burke would do if he lived to be 150 years old. I, I'm, just, I'm just asking you to stay out of this and don't drag us into losing any more money in lawsuits like we've done the past 10 years. It's it just, it just got to be, you know what? It just doesn't seem that council knows which way the wind is blowing the flag at times. And believe me, if there's anybody that wants to see you people successful, it's me. But it, you have some of the, the, the best people in the city take time to come up here and talk week after week and make valid suggestions about problems. Uh, what do we get? This asinine nonsense from Pell. Speculation and what's going to happen, it doesn't happen. I was reading, you know, I, I don't understand what, what's wrong with the idea about the billboards, you know, but it didn't go over the, the, the city trying to collect some money on that. But when, when Darren Industries was on Dixon Street, they got fined twice for polluting the city. There's so much dust, people tell me they still have dust come into their homes from them. They ran overweight, over length, over with trucks, ups and down that residential neighborhood for years. Nothing was done. When council had a chance to put an end to it, you didn't. That's why I'm saying don't get us into another lawsuit with, with anybody. And I'm talking as a, as a, a taxpayer, not as a, an employee of the Naples. I ran up and down that road 40 years ago with Rex going when I drove a wrecker. I know the area very well. And I just got one other thing to talk about. Last summer, I think it was in August, at the Neon Car Show, I went over to the swimming pool and looked at that slide. And I know about those slides now from being in the swimming pool business. They're fiberglass. I know everybody up there knows what fiberglass is and what it consists of. If it isn't polished and waxed continuously, it loses its integrity. Do you understand what I'm saying? That board is supposed to be inspected, that slide is supposed to be inspected, I was told. It, it, it cannot pass a legal inspection. There's loose steps on it. I was, I was there Thank and I you. was on it. Thank and you, Mr. That, I, I don't think it's ever been waxed. My son's got a a 72 Corvette. I don't think they've washed it and waxed it in 20 years. I'm serious. You run your hand on it, you can get little slivers and, and, and cuts. You can imagine what a small child going down that yes. slide, if there's a cut, that family will own this city. You could ask that handsome young fellow over there and he'll agree. Thank you. That slide needs to be closed permanently to somebody inspects it and puts a legal inspection sticker on there because it cannot be legal. 
I know this is a friend of the mayor's at the concession stand, and I don't care who he is, that, that slide could not legally have been inspected the last couple years. Thank you. Tony and Moses? I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to, uh, to offend anybody, believe no, me. No. Uh, but I, we not, the five minutes. I don't want to have cast passed. you know get get you people mad at me. But you just just don't seem to be in touch with what people are saying out there like I am. Thank you. Thank you. And Tony Thank Moses. You. Bob Bolas. Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. I'd just like to uh, start off uh, this evening. Uh, I was asked by uh, one of our firemen, Tommy Pattison, to uh, just read off an announcement uh, on his behalf. Uh, anyone that's interested in uh, purchasing one of the uh, 2013 Fireman Parade Day shirts, uh, they're on sale now. They've been on sale for quite some time now, uh, $10 each. And they can be uh, purchased uh, at headquarters or at uh, TP Sports at uh, 504 Luzerne Street. Um, and a phone number is 570-479-2644, uh, and that's for anyone that's interested in a, a Parade Day shirt. Uh, moving on to uh, the MBRO's uh, story that we had in the paper uh, yesterday regarding the, uh, the bid, a second bid that was put in, and uh, we obviously didn't receive any bidders this time. Uh, we're looking to uh, generate uh, over $353,000 uh, this was part of the recovery plan, and it's included in our 2013 budget. Uh, the only thing I could say tonight is maybe we can consider perhaps putting it out for bid one final time. And if at that point we don't receive anything, um, then I guess we're, we're left with having to try to go out and find uh, some sort of marketing firm uh, where we can make this happen and make this a reality, because we certainly don't want to be looking at later on in the year having to come up with over $300,000. Uh, and having to do it with, uh, obviously, what we don't like to do, taxes. So perhaps we can consider one final time with that, and if not, look, look elsewhere. But maybe we can even uh, go as far as doing some research and see what other, I'm sure we did this already, but if we can uh, make it public as to what other communities throughout the Commonwealth have instituted such programs and, and uh, determine whether or not they were successful, and if, if not, what firms did they deal with? And maybe we can get an idea of where we need to go moving forward. Uh, in regards to the nonprofits, uh, certainly we have a lack of commitment at this point. We never did receive anything in writing from the university and all the other nonprofits. And it's my recommendation at this point in time where we're looking to generate $1.3 million this year and millions on more moving forward, that maybe it's time to once again put a nonprofit task force together with members of council, the administration, and business leaders in the community so that we can get something for moving, moving forward here, so that we can expect to get something in return. As you said, we're not looking to bully the nonprofits. You know, we've been characterized as picking on the university. We're not picking on the university. That's not what this is about. This is about paying your fair share. Uh, this is about you getting services that we, the taxpayers, pay for that you don't contribute to. You know, the 175 you give us each year, as I've said before, is a slap in the face. It's a disrespect to not just the city, but most of all, the residents of this city who certainly struggle enough as it is and pay enough that they're basically carrying the load for you as you sit back and contribute nothing. So maybe it's time to look into doing that, where we can go and sit down and try to compile something together, because the back and forth and going on and, and assuming that this is going to happen uh, is getting frustrating. You know, We need real answers here, and we need to get down to it. Uh, dealing with the agenda tonight, 5C, with standard parking, I'm pleased to see that uh, we're moving forward with this and beginning to uh, implement the accountability and transparency that we've wanted to see with this authority for, for years now. And my only uh, request would be, and as I look, read the legislation moments ago, would it be fair to request a monthly report from standard parking to account for what's going on each month? I'm sure they will provide that. They have been um, very transparent and very accountable uh, up to this point, and they pride themselves, in fact, on those uh, characteristics. So I'm sure that can be done. Okay. Because as we know, obviously knowing their history, that things have been kept from us, and, and we find things out at a later date when it's, it's basically too late to save it. The mess has already occurred, and then we have to go and 
and try to uh, find a solution to fix it. So perhaps, uh, as you said, uh, they have a history of being transparent that they'll provide council with that information each month. Uh, and finally, uh, 7A on the agenda and final order here, dealing with the, uh, the ordinance on uh, Attorney Hughes, Attorney Kelly, and Case Con. Basically, for one final time, I'll just reiterate my thoughts on this. Um, you know, this goes back to, again, the accountability and the transparency and people who have gone above and beyond. You know, a prime example is, as I just talked about, 5C on the agenda. We wouldn't be talking about 5C on the agenda tonight had it not been for Attorney Hughes going above and beyond on behalf of the residents of the city, bringing in someone that's accountable and transparent. And not just Attorney Hughes, but others that have been involved, the council, the administration, everybody that came together knowing that we had to do something to clean up this parking authority. So this is just one example of it, that had it not been for him doing what he did, we wouldn't even be talking and voting to introduce 5C tonight. So I just thought I'd mention that because when we have people that want to come up and challenge it, I think they need to take a look at the big scope. It's not about, it's not a backdoor raise. It's compensation to individuals who have gone above and beyond, not, on, not just for the council, but for the taxpayers, and they should be commended for it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address <coughs> council? Mrs. Craig? Fifth order, 5A motions. Uh, Councilman McGough, do you have any comments or motions tonight? Uh, actually, no. <laughs> Thank <Move> you. Along. <laughs> we'll move along then to Councilman Rogan. Yes, very quickly. Um, first, I guess um, I know Ms. Schumacher will find this, will want a copy of this. Um, we did receive a reply from Linda Abley regarding the status of the loans. And um, I will provide a copy. And I just re it just came in yesterday. I didn't get a chance to fully review it yet, so I will report on that next week. But I'll also give you a copy. And uh, Ms. Abley also would like uh, one of the members of council to meet with her. So I am going to contact her to try to make arrangements uh, for a meeting to go over them and get a little more detail. Um, I just wanted to address. It's not really a city issue, but it is a, an article that was in the newspaper today <coughs> regarding a new form of county government. Um, since the city and the county many times are connected. For instance, when myself and other members of council want it, the tax, um, the period for a discount on tax is extended. The county commissioners and the school district would have been needed to go along. Um, unfortunately, at that point in time, Commissioner Wanzak, um, I, I don't know where Commissioner O'Brien stood, didn't, didn't want to go along with it. So the city was forced to, to keep the uh, discount period at, as short as it is. Now, there was an article uh, about uh, Chuck Volpe pushing for a new form of county government. And um, this is definitely something I think that the citizens of Scranton and the county should explore. And I know the, the commissioners also were talking about consolidation plans. Um, it's definitely the, the idea of going to a county council seems to be popular in a lot of surrounding communities. I think it's something that as a council we should have some input on. and you know, certainly review it because the county does affect the city in, in many aspects and one of them being um, a, a reassessment of taxes that hasn't been done in decades in this county. And maybe if there was a county council where you have a little more representation for the city, that could happen. Um, currently with the current commissioners, we have one that resides in the city of Scranton and two that reside outside of Scranton even though we are by far the biggest municipality within the county. So it was just an interesting read. Um, encourage everyone to check it out and to, to do the research on it. I'm sure petitions will be circulating around on, on this issue and, and maybe others for, uh, for the upcoming election on a, a referendum. Finally, just a couple citizens' requests. Um, a woman called the office that states that she's been trying to call lips for two years about a house that needs to be looked at. It's on 1346 Sanderson Avenue. And also a resident contacted me about a, a home at 1219 Philo Street. Um, both are in terrible condition and uh, they're concerned for the neighborhood. So Mrs. Craig, I will give these to you to, to forward. And also um, there's a huge pothole in front of 927 River Street. Um, the resident reports they tried calling the DPW six times and they assured him that it would be done. And it uh, still hasn't been been addressed as of yet. So that is all I have for tonight. 
And uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscombe, do you have comments or motions tonight? No, I don't have any this evening. Uh, I may just make some comments when legislation comes up, but thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Joyce. Yes, briefly. And, and I apologize for my raspy voice. I'm under the weather. As one may know, there were no bidders for the rebid of a market-based revenue opportunity program for the years of 2013 through 2015 with the two-year option. The market-based revenue opportunity program was a suggestion of Pell and their revised recovery plan that was sent to the city in early 2012. Pell projected that an MBRO program would bring in roughly $350,000 in year one. To quickly educate, market-based revenue opportunity programs, or MBRO programs, are initiated by governments to realize new revenue, defray existing costs, and improve public services. And they do this through relationships with private vendors. Examples of MBROs are advertising, municipal marketing partnerships, and secondary use of public real estate. The main benefits of an MBRO of MBROs are cost avoidance, revenue enhancement, and limited administrative burdens. There are six general categories of MBROs. These categories are outdoor advertising, street furniture, vehicle advertising, indoor advertising, municipal marketing partnerships, and secondary real estate use. In outdoor advertising programs, government ex governments exchange advertising rights to private companies for cash, shares of advertising revenues, or donations. In regard to street, fur or street furniture, examples of street furniture include bus shelters, benches, newsstands, trash receptacles, and bicycle racks. Many cities have instituted street furniture programs supported by advertising such as Boston, Hartford, Connecticut, Los Angeles, Oakland, Philadelphia, and San Francisco. Concerning city-owned vehicles, an increasing number of cities are exchanging rights on municipal vehicles for revenue and or acquisition costs. In Scranton, there are already a few police vehicles with advertisements. Indoor advertising is conducted in municipal facilities and buildings with frame posters put up in high traffic areas. There are many cities and counties which have successful MBRO programs. For instance, New Haven, Connecticut receives a great deal of revenue from MBROs. So does Philadelphia and other major cities. Lackawanna County even has a successful MBRO program. As you may see, advertisements on buses traveling throughout the county. With all of this being said, there are opportunities out there Though we have not had any bidders for an MBRO program, which is unfortunate. Mrs. Craig, please contact Mr. McGowan with this in mind and ask him to contact Lackawanna County as well as the cities of Philadelphia and New Haven, Connecticut to determine how their MBRO programs have been implemented and what Scranton can do to get an MBRO program up and running. I think the quicker we act on this, the better off we'll be. Obviously, we have no bidders, but we're only advertising in the Scranton Times, and there are marketing firms out there. So hopefully, um, with some due diligence, an MBRO program can be up and running. In other matters tonight, Scranton City Council has received correspondence from Roseanne Novembrino, our city controller, regarding the UDAG repayment account or RERE account. Mrs. Novembrino reports that there have been no payments made from the UDAG repayment account in the month of December. In addition, we've received a list of um, 2012 payment in lieu of tax um, donations. And I'd just like to thank some of uh, the contributors being the Scranton Housing Authority the University of Scranton, Lutherwood, Harrison House, and Covenant Presbyterian Church. We're enthused that these um, entities have taken the time to donate to the city of Scranton, and we ho are hopeful that they will continue to donate and even consider contributing more in the future. 
And I do have a few citizens' requests for the night. A Scranton resident is having a tough time getting a large pothole in the vicinity of his home filled. The pothole is located directly in front of 927 River Street. Mr. Rogan already, <coughs> already took care of that. Oh, he took care of yeah. that one? Okay, sorry. <clears throat> Finally, various North Scranton residents have voiced their concerns about the condition of the patch of road directly between the 600 block of Mary Street and Market Street. Residents report large potholes making travel conditions very difficult. Residents are voicing their concerns about the road because this is now a heavily traveled area since the Rockwell Street Bridge is closed and Mary Street is part of the detour route. Mrs. Craig, if you could please contact Director Dewar and ask him to rectify the situation as soon as possible, it would be much appreciated. And that's all for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. On tonight's agenda for introduction by Council is item 5C an ordinance authorizing mayor and other appropriate officials to enter into a management agreement with Standard Parking Corporation to administer and manage the city's on-street parking meter operation. Today, the administration sent two pieces of legislation related to this matter by emergency declaration to City Council's office. However, Council members have not seen either the final version of the parking meter agreement or the legislation to amend a previous ordinance until tonight, while our council solicitor received the final versions only today. Therefore, I have held the second piece of legislation until our next council meeting, and council will only vote to introduce the management agreement this evening. At this time, I call on Solicitor Hughes to provide the public with an overview of the management agreement and the amendments to the prior parking ordinance. Thank you, Madam President. Um, about a month ago, I received the draft of the management agreement between the city and standard parking for them to manage the parking meters at that time was 1,095 spaces. Um, I reviewed it and on, I believe it was December 18th, I sent my comments to the city solicitor. Um, I had about nine comments uh, regarding it. The first thing, if, uh, if you have a copy of it, um, there in your your packet um, number one parking spaces that was revised because the original agreement what that had in it was that it was just downtown Scranton for a thousand ninety spaces um, and they had a map attached just of the um, city of Scranton I mean of downtown Scranton I think that was taken from a parking study um, what it was my impression at the time that they were going to manage all the parking meters I thought that the area should be defined um, I defined downtown Scranton by Mifflin Avenue Lackawanna Avenue I think Pine Street and Jefferson Avenue and I recommended that also that it be include that the areas around Community Medical Center and the Moses Taylor Mercy also be included so the parking spaces, this was all re was redone. Um, as you notice, that, that what they have is that in various sections of the city of Scranton. Um, and then they have a cap on Exhibit A, which is the map for just the downtown Scranton area. But the primary boundaries are Mifflin Avenue, Arthur Avenue, which of course is Nayog Park, East Gibson Street, which is the outer area of the um, former Mercy Hospital and River Street, which would bring in the, I, believe, I, I always refer to it as the Chamberlain plant. So, and this is a total of 1,400 spaces. Uh, if you go back, there's a new whereas clause that was put in. Um, I discussed this uh, with the solicitor's office. Um, I recommended that we had, when we adopt this, 
They will also have to amend Ordinance 100 of 2009, which is the park for the hours, rates, and um, the various um, locations. One area that there's going to be new parking meters installed is up at the um, Audubon School, up on Colfax and Mulberry Street. I, I noticed in driving through there that at one time that was all a no parking zone. Uh, because of the school, but now that the school is closed, people are parking there free. Uh, I believe there's about anywhere from 14 to 16 cars parking there all day, all times of the day. Uh, there's no meters, so meters are going to be installed there. That ordinance will be amended to include that area mm -hmm. uh, to put in parking meters there. There are parking meters on the southerly side of Mulberry Street going up. Um, the other changes. Um, was that if you look at 3G, that was originally drafted that standard parking would submit their budget to the city and it would be deemed approved. The city had 30 days uh, to approve the budget. Uh, if they didn't act in 30 days, it would be deemed approved. I recommended that it be at least 45 days because if it weren't 45, that there's no way it could be Legis it could be reviewed and legislation adopted, uh, come to council and go to the mayor for signature. So that was changed to 45 days. Uh, I'll go over what's here as operating expenses and I'll, I do have a budget of this. Uh, basically what, they're, what they will receive is a commission on the total amount of revenues from the parking meters and also from citations. This sets forth what the expenses are in there. Um, I'll go over that in a little while. Um, and then there's, that sets forth the operating expenses. Uh, paragraph five, there were no changes to that. That's the gross receipts on net profit. I did put in there, I, there was one change and that was citation revenue. Uh, Show me all cash, coin, paper money, credit, and credit card payments and tokens collected. Um, this sets up as to, you take the gross revenue less the operating expenses equals the net profit. Um, they will receive a management fee of $10,000 a month. That'll be $120,000 per year in addition to their percentage of, uh, of, the, of the net revenue. Um, under Article 8B, they will have an office to pay for, they will, they will have an office here in City Hall in, Scranton, in the Treasurer's office um, where fines can be paid um, for the parking citations. At one time that used to be at the Scranton Parking Authority. Mm -hmm. uh, now that will be in City Hall. Uh, I believe this is where it always used to be paid, you know, down in the Treasurer's office. So they will have, they will have an office there. Um, Article 9 is their insurance coverages. Uh, for, of course, <coughs> typical is workers' compensation, a million dollars general liability poli or employer liability insurance of a million, uh, commercial general liability of two million, automobile liability of two million, um, an umbrella liability of a hundred million dollars. Then they will report to the city on a monthly basis. Um, of all the revenue 15 days by the end of each month. The, most of the rest of this is, is fairly normal. Um, just the owner's obligations, that being the city. Um, 14 is cross indemnifications. 15 is the owner's insurance. Uh, One item that was stricken that I recommend to be stricken, and it's, of course, it's out of this agreement here, um, that item number 27 is the assignment. They wanted to have the right to assign this. I recommended that they not have the right to assign it uh, without the prior written consent of the city. That wasn't in there before. They could just assign the contract. Um, there was various language that was deleted from that, and this is the language that I, that I recommended. 
so that the only way that they could assign this contract is with the prior written consent of the city and standard language which consent shall not be unreasonably withheld um, I also recommended that they put in the city solicitor's office uh, for any notices so that the solicitor would have notice of it instead of just the business administrator uh, one item that was in here previously was number 32 um, and that was stricken uh, my recommendation uh, that was that in the event that litigation is instituted that the loser would pay attorney's fees um, that's what's called the English system in England um, anyone who files a lawsuit and loses the lawsuit all costs of the litigation can be assessed against them of course in the American system everybody pays their own attorneys and their own legal fees um, one the comparison of this is when you look at when the parking authority was doing this and of course we terminated the cooperation agreement under the cooperation agreement uh, the parking authority um, in the previous year they received from the city of Scranton in the budget in 2012 562 thousand um, dollars to pay for their employees um, and to pay for their other expenses and that was never broken down as to what it was it was just a blanket amount that went from the city to the parking authority to subsidize the parking authority for the collection of the meters and for we don't know what else the surplus of the money went for um, of course that's not in this year's budget that was a cost of that um, they also received a 10% commission on all of the revenues that were collected um, that would be between 800 and 800,000 and a million dollars it varied per year so in the best year when they collected a million dollars uh, the city would get 900,000 but then 562,000 went back to them so when you look at it the city made about three hundred fifty thousand dollars on the parking meters after taking into account the 10 percent commission in the five hundred and sixty two thousand dollar subsidy um, the citation revenue that the city received at that time was about seven hundred thousand dollars last year what standard parking estimates this year is that it would be a total revenue of, of the meters would be a million two hundred and sixty eight thousand dollars which would be an increase over last year's estimate by almost uh, three hundred thousand dollars the meter rate will be going up uh, by 50 cents an hour it will now be 25 cents uh, for every 10 minutes instead of 25 cents for every 15 minutes that'll be another three hundred thirty eight thousand um, dollars they have another what they call standard operating practices I don't know what that is but that's another hundred and forty five thousand they estimate the citation revenue by enhancement of of the of the meter people and of course with the conversion of the of the of the meters will increase from seven hundred thousand to one point eight million and they have a technology upgrade here of one hundred forty five thousand dollars for total revenue of three million eight hundred and twenty six thousand dollars they estimate that their operating expenses will be nine hundred and seventy eight thousand uh, for total operating income before incentive fees of uh, two hundred and two million eight hundred and forty seven thousand uh, dollars when you compare that that's almost an increase of almost 280 percent if you look at it the, based on my figures from from last year uh, the city probably netted a little bit more than a million dollars on citation and meter revenue uh, with the parking authority doing it so if they achieve what they anticipate uh, with the meter increases with better utilization and management of the meter reader people issuing of citations uh, being more vigilant with the uh, meter enhancement program uh, it would appear that when you put it all together and of course it wasn't together in any previous budgets but the net revenue with the parking authority doing it 
of approximately $1 million a year could increase this year to about $2.8 million. Um, if during the week after you review this, if you have any questions, just call me. Uh, I'll go over it with you, but uh, that's pretty much what the agreement is. Uh, the changes, there was only one change in there that was not made that I, rec that I at least thought should be discussed, and that was this is a five-year contract, and there's a clause in there for their management fee to increase. I thought that that should be negotiated, but that was left the same. But I don't have any problem with it. It's, uh, it's the inflationary rate. Uh, whatever that would be, uh, there's, a, there's a formula. Uh, it'd be the, you know, the, I believe it's the lesser of. So, based on everything, virtually all the, after I reviewed the agreement, most of the changes were made. Um, I think it's a, it's an agreement that should be approved by the city. And thank you very much, Solicitor Hughes, for all of your work and for that detailed explanation. Uh, I think it is certainly a significant step in the right direction to learn that whereas uh, in the last fiscal year the city realized only one million dollars in revenue and we can now look forward to in 2013 two point well over 2.8 million dollars in revenue and so again I think uh, Solicitor Hughes for all of his efforts concerning the parking authority and to all of those who were involved with us um, I have only a few brief updates to present tonight and I'll begin with MBRO uh, since many of my colleagues have discussed it uh, the program proposed and included in the revised recovery plan by the administration again received no bids consequently the administration is now able to contact and negotiate directly with marketing firms and the uh, administration has already identified uh, quite a number of eligible firms it's important to note that the city advertised for and continue seeking a program manager not advertisers rather it's the program manager that will solicit advertisements to be placed on city properties and vehicles though some appear to hope for the failure of all revenue generators I fully support any and all efforts to provide new revenue for this city these issues require unfettered work by the administration and the support of all involved in city government because new revenue generators such as the MBR program will lower the burden on our taxpayers doing nothing isn't an option feckless criticism devoid of feasible alternate solutions isn't an option Next, in regard to Lake Scranton Road, City Council sent a letter on January 18th, 2013 to Civil Crossroads Consulting Engineers, LLC, the City of Scranton's alternate engineering firm, requesting that it conduct an engineering study of Lake Scranton Road and the related effects of steady truck traffic. I await their response, which I will report publicly. Also, in response to my request during last week's council meeting for tree trimming next to 1372 Penn Avenue, Mr. Santoli responded promptly that he is currently seeking bids for the work required to trim one tree and remove two trees in the 1300 block of Penn Avenue. As soon as the bid work is completed, the tree trimming and removal will begin immediately. Once again, I thank Mr. Santoli, our city forester, for his timely response. And finally, I just have one or two citizens' requests. For the past few months, residents have noted an accumulation of six to ten cars at a property in East Mountain. These cars are being repaired in a residential neighborhood. Provide the address 
tulips and ask them to assign a city inspector to visit the location. North Scranton residents demand to know when the North Scranton Junior High project will begin. Please contact the appropriate parties to learn the starting date. And finally, homeowners report that Christmas trees have not been picked up in the 600 block of Harrison Avenue in three weeks. Please address pickup <coughs> as soon as possible. And that's it. 5B, establishing a no parking zone along the easterly side of West Market Street, State Route 6011, from Brick Avenue to Rockwell Avenue to allow for safe site distance for a proposed driveway by Noon's Market for a property located at 416 West Market Street. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials to enter into a management agreement with Standard Parking Corporation to administer and manage the city's on-street parking meter operation, procure on-street parking meter equipment, enforce violations of city on-street parking meter ordinance, employ personnel to administer and enforce the city's on-street metered parking operation, prepare and deliver to the city a budget every year for city approval. Deposit gross receipts from monies collected and earned by Standard into a federally insured bank account in exchange for the sum of $10,000 per month for a period of five years beginning January 1, 2013 and ending on December 31, 2017. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, I was wondering if uh, it would be possible or if anyone else would wish to um, seek a caucus with um, someone from Standard Parking uh, to uh, maybe explain how it will operate, um, you know, and some of the changes that will take place. I uh, and I do thank Attorney Hughes. I know he uh, explained we, the management agreement, but... Uh, we had discussed this actually uh, at our last meeting with representatives from Standard. And it was in fact their suggestion that uh, there would be a, um, oh, uh, let's say a public relations effort, if you will, in order that they could explain fully to the public the changes that are forthcoming. Uh, they also asked that uh, they be able to make a presentation on ECTV, uh, a separate program where they would explain uh, all of the new measures that are being instituted, why it's being done, um, how the program is going to operate. Um, you know, basically, I think to um, educate the public and to uh, get everyone on board with standard parking and its changes. So if that would... That would satisfy my okay. request. Thank you. Is there anyone else on the question? Yes, um, I think, I think that will be great to have someone on ECTV, but is somebody actually from standard parking going to come into council so council members and the public could ask questions? Um, we can certainly, we can ask for that. Uh, the representatives, however, come from, I know one is from Miami, Florida. Uh, the other Maybe is- Maybe we can go there. Is, a, <laughs> is also from uh, quite a distance. Make that a motion. And uh, I believe they had been uh, in town, was it either just this week or last week, um, to probably, I, I didn't attend any meetings at that time, but uh, I imagine they would have had discussions with the administration and probably with uh, Mr. Washoe. So I don't know that we're actually going to be able to um, have these gentlemen fly in, uh, I, in in the amount of time needed to get this passed. I would just say I'm glad that it's not going to be passed in one reading. I think a piece of legislation this important should go through three readings. Um, I know before, I, 
I'm going to vote yes this week just so I have more time to read it and uh, and go over everything. But I, I do have I did have a few phone calls from um, residents and from employees of former employees of the parking authority. I guess that would now be employees of Central Parking that wanted to discuss it. And I apologize I didn't get back to them yet. Um, but I do think we should it should go three readings so we have more time and hopefully it may be a representative um, we could have a conference call something of that nature where so I know that the public will have a lot of questions and you know after everyone reads it over and over again there'll be more questions that come up but like I said I will vote yes this week and uh, give a little more time to review things anyone else just just briefly uh, uh, I've been out of the loop for a little while. I apologize. So this is all pretty new to me. I, I have this is the first time I've seen the agreement, and, and I do, and and I may have some questions uh, that I can uh, uh, refer to Mr. Hughes also. But I do like the fact that they will make a presentation, and uh, you know, uh, from the beginning, our our whole thing was the transparency and and the proper operation. And that's that's what we want to ensure. And uh, I will have some questions to make sure that our votes that we uh, had placed last year assure that transparency. And uh, you know, we're getting the best bang for the buck on that. So that's all I have. And to say. I I can respond to that that um, both um, gentlemen who represent what is now standard parking. Uh, previously, it had been uh, central parking that we were working with, but central has merged officially with standard parking, the largest um, parking company in the United States. And so now their, their merger has, of course, <laughs> created, indeed, once again, the largest and most successful agency nationwide. Um, and both representatives, as I said, during uh, meetings that were conducted, offered uh, sincerely and voluntarily to provide monthly reports to the city. Uh, they have been, as I said earlier, uh, nothing but accountable and transparent. And I would suggest that between now and our next meeting, if any council member has any questions about the agreement, please contact our attorney, Solicitor Hughes. I'm sure he will be very happy to answer any questions <laughs> that you have. Um, if he doesn't know the answer, uh, I believe uh, we'd be able to get in contact with one of the two or perhaps both of the uh, representatives who traveled to Scranton, I'd say they've probably been here once a month for the last several months. Okay. So please don't hesitate to make those contacts this week <coughs> if you have questions or concerns. If, if I just may add, uh, not to belabor it, but, but a question just to, from a legal standpoint or, or however it was, uh, when we had the meters, we placed out a bid uh, to have someone, you know, bid on, on updating the meters and stuff like that. Now, uh, we were supposed to have a, a test period with the meters. I don't mm -hmm. believe that ever happened. Um, the other thing now is, if, you know, I mean, there's a certain company named in here, but if we okay this contract, shouldn't they bid out for the best bang for the buck again for, for all of us? I mean, I'm just worried that, you know, seeing some of the other technology out there now, that, uh, you know, we may, we may be able to get a much better deal and it may improve our, our city coffers. I, think uh, I don't want to lose that. You know, that, that's part of what we had not had with the parking authority and I don't want to see us lose that again. Well, I think uh, the situation that was discussed during the meetings was that uh, the city had put it out to bid twice, and um, the company that's listed in the backup was chosen by the administration. Um, Standard Parking has been in touch with them numerous times throughout all of uh, these talks. I, I think what they were hoping for 
is to get this up and moving ASAP so that the 2.8 million will be realized this year. I, I, I understand that, but I still have some questions on that aspect because, uh, you know, now it's under a different management. There were other companies that were afraid to bid because they bid three times with the city and, and got nowhere. I mean, it was, it was a joke. So, uh, I well, mean, that, that's my only concern. If you could talk. It's with a different company. Now the same as, as, as Central Parking and Standard. Now they're a different company. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, think, I just think, I think that there's options out there yet to, to benefit us I, a little better. I think Attorney Hughes mentioned in his presentation, though, that um, uh, if the company assigns any contracts, it is with the approval of the city of Scranton. Is that correct, Solicitor Hughes? Yes, that would be is the standard parking cannot assign this to, to another parking company. Mm -hmm. So w without the consent of the city. So they're, they're locked into the management of this with the city for a five-year period. Okay. Um, I, what is in here and I didn't explain is the fact that the meter enhancements that are going to be done, um, such as, the, you know, the credit card, be able to use a credit card with that, um, and other, other technology, um, for the enhancement, uh, that is all being financed by standard parking. I mean, they're charging us for that even though we're going to own it. Uh, they could probably get a much cheaper rate due to the fact that if they have a hundred million dollar, you know, policy <laughs> um, for the, you know, the, as I stated with their, with their insurances, um, that, that they can get a much better rate in the, in the financing that the city could get. That's going to be financed over a period of five years. Uh, after that, the city would own the meters. One of the things that was discussed at the meeting when we met with them um, was whether that little device to be put in that would turn the meter back to zero due to the expense right now and to the enhancement program, that was not utilized. I think that was street smart technology that, that Jack might have been talking about. I remember when they came in and that was one of the things that they had. I mean, that's an option that they could look at and come back to the city. I mean, these are professional managers. It's not like the former Scranton Parking Authority that, you know, they just really had no managerial ability mm -hmm. in maintaining the parking meter. So I, I think there's other options in here that, that what Jack is talking about is that, that to enhance, you know, the revenue option, obviously that's what they're going to be interested in, you know, for themselves and also for the city. Um, that there's other areas that they could come back and recommend to the city. These are the professional managers, the yes. largest, you know, they, I think they even manage the parking in New York City, you know, most major cities. Um, so that, that we're not foreclosing that, and I certainly think that if any council person ever comes up with any idea, you know, give it to them, and I think they're probably, you know, they'd probably look at implementing it. Yes, in fact, they said this was just um, <coughs> our starting point. And throughout the life of the contract, they are going to be looking to make more and more <coughs> upgrades that can increase revenue and help businesses downtown. And uh, certainly, you know, I, as our solicitor said, they're very open to uh, new technology, advances that can be made that will increase the financial line. Um, I know, I, I thought we had also discussed at that point that there is, it seems anyway, that the more time goes by, the less costly all of the um, equipment and measures that have to be taken will become. But in addition to that, um, they, I believe they also mentioned that there's, uh, or they had heard that there are companies now that won't even require the puck in the ground, that it can be done even now without that. Mm -hmm. So it's the technology is improving constantly and they want to keep abreast of that but that's my only question if we're locked in for five years 
to one company at this point without, you know, without them looking at the other opportunities out there. They're just taking the company that the city said this is it, and, and that's, you know. Well, I, th I think in the agreement where we would be locked in with standard, I don't know that it means we're locked in. No, 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 I'm, not ta I'm talking about the provider for the meter system. Right. Not, I know not what the, you're saying. the management company. There's probably well, 20 companies out there that, that could do the meter system. Right. So what I'm saying is I don't know that the um, contract locks us into that aspect so maybe that's something you'd like to discuss with uh, solicitor Hughes through the week he could check sure. that out and see when that can be changed rebid etc and again it's basically from from day one that was our, our ultimate goal the transparency and to generate as much revenue as possible uh, you know, and, and I think there's, again, it's, it's a changing field month to month. Yes. <laughs> so there, there's more technology out there. And uh, I don't think we're locked into one particular bidder at this point because that was null and void. That should be null and void. If, if I could, and I, I think that things are getting too mixed up in here with the proverbial apples with the oranges. What this management agreement is, is that they are going to manage all the parking meters for the city for a period of five years. That is, it's up to them to enhance the revenue and determine from other suppliers who make parking meters whether they should be installed. That stuff costs money. And to do this enhancement right now, it's going to cost almost, I think it's, I, I forget what the exact figure is, but, you know, with interest and everything else, it's like $6,500 a month. You know, so that had come to, you know what, that would be like about $78,000, round it off to $80,000, so it's going to be over $400,000 over the term of this five-year agreement. Now, if somebody else comes in with new meter technology, I mean, these are the people that are all over the country. In fact, they're worldwide in parking meter programs. You know, they know what's going on. It's up to them or us. They could come to the city and say, look, we could do this. It's going to cost a million dollars. Do you want to do it? It's the best technology in the world. And this is what it'll do. It'll write a ticket automatically. Uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, somebody might come up with that. With the, you know, with the camera on the pole, when the, it goes out, it just snaps a snaps a picture of the of the license plate and automatically sends them a ticket. I, mean, I I I don't know. That's up to them. It's not up to council or you know or the city to say to interfere with their management of it. But this is a management contract. They've determined right now with the city, based on the city's bids, that this is what should be done. And this was a managerial decision, I believe, of the mayor and with, you know, standard central parking to say that, that this is what was bid, this is what we can implement, and this is going to be the cost. So now if other technology comes along, I'm sure they're going to come to the city and say there's 15 other companies out there that are producing, or I don't know how many there are, producing parking meters. They've come up with this technology. We believe this would be better for you to implement here, and it raised this much revenue. It's going to raise fifty thousand dollars more revenue a year, but to implement, it's going to cost a hundred thousand dollars. Why would you do it? Right. I mean, that's what it comes. That's what these people do. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're there to optimize. You know, the the revenue and and the profit for the city from those parking meters. Thank you. I think that clears Thank you. it up, and um, we can leave those decisions in their hands. All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have been so moved. 5D, accepting the recommendation of the Historical Architecture Review Board and approving the Certificate of Appropriateness for Pocono Sign and Graphic, 1147 The Hideout, Lake Ariel, Pennsylvania, 
for removal of existing signage located on <coughs> left side facade, replaced with new signage on the, of the same dimension slash color scheme, and change business name on existing awning to match dimension of 10 inches high by 7 feet wide at 414 Spruce Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A. Reading by title, File of Council Number 3, 2013, an ordinance. Amending File of Council Number 56, 2011, an ordinance entitled General Operating Budget 2012 by transferring $692.22 from account number 01051-00051-4201, Licensing Permits and Inspections, Professional Services, to account number 01051-00051-4101, Licensing Permits and Inspections, Mileage Slash Uniform Allowance to provide funding for mileage reimbursement to inspectors. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Seventh Order 7A. For consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of Council Number 2, 2013, Ordinance of the City of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, appointing W. Boyd Hughes, Esquire, and Paul A. <coughs> Kelly, Jr., Esquire, as Special Counsel to the City of Scranton and CaseCon Capital Incorporated as Financial Advisor to the City of Scranton on the issuance, sale, and placement of any bonds and or notes for the financing of the City of Scranton's unfunded debt, any transaction involving the sale leaseback of city assets, any transactions involving the sale or lease of any authority assets, which reduces the City of Scranton's bond indebtedness under the Unit Debt Act, or results in the payment or loan of money by any authority to the City of Scranton, the refinancing or refunding of any of the City's outstanding bond issues, and any 2013 tax anticipating notes other than the 2013 TAN Note A, and authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute a contract with Case Con Capital Incorporated. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. I make a motion to take resolutions number 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 of 2013 from the table and place them at the seventh order for final consideration. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 2, 2013, previously tabled. Appointment of Joseph D. Antona, 1331 Cornell Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority for an additional five year term. Mr. D. Antona's current term expired on December 31, 2012 and his new term will expire on December 31st, 2017. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Yes, on the question. Um, I don't believe we receive resumes from any of these individuals, have we? No. No. As we have in the past, um, I will be voting no on all five of these items. Um, again, it's not a, a knock on the people who are applying. So I know some of them and I'm friends with some of them, but. We have to keep the rules the same for everyone else. Mm -hmm. um, regarding item 7F, I do want to note that Mr. Renda's appointment, that vote is, I'm going to vote no on that one as well, but that is based on merit, not just because he didn't um, send in a resume. I'd like to echo some of uh, Mr. Rogan's comments. 
I will be voting no on all of the appointments as well, um, being that they did not provide at least a letter of interest saying that they um, were interested in the positions or a, a resume or some form of letter. I would have to agree with my colleagues. Uh, like Mr. Rogan said, I mean, many of these are personal friends of ours. Um, you know, we made it known at meeting after meeting, there's letters sent out to them, and uh, I'm sorry they, they didn't take the time to at least uh, send us a letter of interest. But, uh, you know, we have to stick to our rules, and uh, I too will be voting no. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Loscom? No. Mr. Joyce? No. Mrs. Evans? No. I hereby declare item 7B defeated. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 3, 2013, previously tabled, appointment of John Granahan. 1504 Price Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority for an additional five year term. Mr. Granahan's current term expired on December 31st, 2012, and his new term will expire on December 31st, 2017. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7C. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Loscom? No. Mr. Joyce? No. Mrs. Evans? No. I hereby declare item 7C defeated. 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Rules, for adoption, resolution number 4, 2013, previously tabled. Appointment of Jack DeLeo, 125 Whitetail Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority for an additional five-year term. Mr. DeLeo's current term expired on December 31st, 2012, and his new term will expire on December 31st, 2017. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 70. Second. On the question, roll call, please. Mr. McGaugh? Yes. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Loskin? No. Mr. Joyce? No. Mrs. Evans? No. I hereby declare item 7D defeated. 7E, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 5, 2013, previously tabled. Appointment of Colleen Gleason, 2104 Kapaus Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, as a member of the Scranton Municipal Recreation Authority for an additional five year term. Mrs. Gleason's current term expired on December 31st, 2012, and her new term will expire on December 31st, 2017. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7E. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Laskum? No. Mr. Joyce? No. Mrs. Evans? No. I hereby declare item 7E defeated. 7F, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for adoption, resolution number 6, 2013, previously tabled. Appointment of Stuart Renda, 1112 Woodlawn Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, as a member of the Scranton Sewer Authority Board for an additional five year term. Mr. Renda's current term expired on December 31st, 2012, and his new term will expire on December 31st, 2017. As chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7F. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? No. Mr. Loscom? No. Mr. Joyce? No. Mrs. Evans? No. I hereby declare item 7F defeated. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.